Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about some more house flippers, specifically the Florida Flipsters. And I'm pretty sure they're related to Flowrider because like Flowrider, they just state what they are. Unfortunately, flippers and house flippers have had a really bad name for themselves through the recent years. Flipping is when you buy a house, you do the minimal updates, and then you sell it on for profit. But with this, some people have created some really terrible design decisions, which we will be discussing today. And like our last video, I will be showing at the end how we could have kept the specific thing the way it was and made it look better without completely destroying it. Today we are taking this fireplace from Hobbit Core to Cottage Core. Now a lot of you suggested that we should just clean the stones and it would brighten it. However, these stones have very large dark grout lines that just look dirty even after a good scrub. So we're going to be trying the German schmear technique. It's ironic to me that some people said this was such a millennial trend, when in reality this technique was developed centuries ago and used on castles and buildings all throughout Europe. So in my personal opinion, I think this is actually a timeless look that gives the fireplace an almost old world feel. Let me just say that this was a true trust the process project for us. Trust the process? Um, I don't know about that one. Here is how it turned out. What do you think? That looks like a terrible version of cookies and cream ice cream or a paper mache that I did when I was in grade three. I feel like this looks really unfinished. I can understand where they were coming from in terms of wanting to lighten it, but I do think the acid wash would have been a better option because the problem that we've got here now is that they've pretty much covered this beautiful fireplace, but it looks unfinished. And when we do see it all put together in the house, it still doesn't look quite right. And the main reason is because of the German smear technique. Now, you might be thinking, oh, the German smear has been around for a while. It should be fine. Uh, no, this is a technique that is always done on bricks. And this is something that they didn't seem to think about in the process. So they ended up covering the natural flow of the rocks. And that's what makes it look a little disjointed now. And because obviously the rocks are a little bit more raised in some areas and obviously disappeared in others, it gives this almost cookies and cream effect, which doesn't look quite right. Honestly, if I was them and I saw it at that point and I knew that I couldn't go back, I would almost have covered the entire fireplace, which I know a lot of you would probably come at me for that and have this igloo looking fireplace. But especially when you're putting in that much time and effort to try and update something and it still looks unfinished, it's almost easier to cover something up, which is why I understand why a lot of the flippers do end up painting everything white because it does just make it look cleaner and make it look a little bit more finished. But this wasn't the only bit of drama that they were in. Obviously it was bad enough that they used a technique that they had never done and it looks like it. They look like they've never done it before. But the next thing was the faux beam debacle. This vaulted ceiling was just begging for a beam and today we are finally installing one. Due to the size of the beam needed, we knew we'd have to find a faux beam for us to physically be able to have the strength to lift. We found these vintage style would be beams made from foam from a company called Outwater, which ended up being the perfect solution. Luckily, the install process was quick and easy because I do not love heights and I was happy I had to only hold it up there for like 10 minutes. Of course, this room was just long enough that we had to use a second beam, but luckily they have these rubber straps to hide the seams and to make it all look cohesive. That thing literally looks like a Snickers bar. <laughs> Honestly, that looks exactly like the type of prop that you would use when you were in like grade four or grade five and you had to do the birth of Jesus Christ for your school play and that beam was up in the barn. <laughs> like that thing looks so terrible. It doesn't even look real. Like if it looked semi-real, I'd be like, okay, don't love the fact that it's foam, but at least it looks semi-realistic. But this doesn't, this literally looks like a shit stain on the ceiling. For lighting, we wanted a mid-century kind of funky light to keep in the 70s spirit for the space, and I am so obsessed with the one we ended up choosing. I don't know about the rest of you, but even though I am a designer, I don't really know that much about electrical works. I know some of the basics. And uh, one of the basics is don't put a faux beam up on the ceiling where you intend to put a light fixture through because fire has it. See, this is a thing that I think a lot of flippers have come to have a bad rap and a bad name for. I actually loved the idea of flipping an older home that, you know, was decrepit and someone couldn't live in and updating it to the point where someone can live in it and it's, 
you know, got some of the more modern amenities that you need these days. I think that is a really wonderful, humble thing to do to bring life back to these old places instead of just destroying them. And when I was younger, I thought that's what these people were doing. But it seems to be more and more of a trend of just buying houses that are just a little bit outdated, but still livable, and then going ahead and making interesting DIY projects that aren't going to stand the test of time. If one of these two was a contractor and knew exactly how to put up a real beam or even just electrical wires, that would be nice, then I probably wouldn't have as much of an issue with it because I know that the person is doing this to a certain standard. But especially in America, it certainly seems like you don't need to have as many checks done as you do in Australia. So in Australia, when we have someone renovate a home, they need to get checked off on almost every single point. Of course, there's certain DIY things that obviously go under the radar, but something like that would not fly. And I am shocked that they even thought that that was a good idea because not only is it not going to last long, it is a potential health and safety hazard because if it doesn't burn the house down, it could easily fall on someone's head. Like that is a big light they've got there and they're attached it to foam. <sighs> Chill out, I need a... That there was a filled in swimming pool and after realizing a new pool was way out of budget we had to get creative we turned what was essentially a muddy dirt pit into an outdoor oasis by not only adding a stock tank pool area but also adding in plenty of space to lounge and just take in this beautiful lush backyard yeah look at that patio so they've literally just concreted over that in-ground pool and mind you they could have just put sand or just like packed down some pebbles or something like that they could have easily have left it there and told the new owners, hey, there's a pool there if you want it. But instead they've concreted over that. So it means that you literally cannot, it would be so expensive to take up that concrete now. Like there's, there's no forethought that really happens. It's just like, okay, well, what's the thing that's going to make this place sell the quickest? Uh, and it, it doesn't really think about the fact of, okay, how are these people actually going to use this space? And is this potentially something that could be important for someone else in the future? And instead they put in a, I, a fake pool. I don't even know what to call this. It's literally just like a tin. It looks like a trough. It looks like a trough for, for a cow. And in that section, they've also got these piquette style wood little beams. And I'm pretty sure I've seen them at Bunnings. They're the, like the cheapest thing you can possibly get. So you know that the quality is just really quite low down and it's it's just unfortunate because obviously they want to get as much profit as possible but then they're on selling to a customer and a paying person that is expecting a certain level of quality to be there and it's just not that faux beam lasts any more than a year I'd be surprised and I would happily pack myself up and be like, you know what, I was wrong, but having a foam beam on the ceiling is just not going to last forever. Having these paquette style timber pieces aren't going to last forever either. And it just seems to be all these cosmetic things that aren't actually going to withstand the test of time. It's literally just there for a visual appearance. And then once it's sold, it can fall apart. And it's really unfortunate because I feel like a lot of homes are built like this these days, even um, sometimes even townhouses that are built. It's literally built to look modern, but the actual quality and the workmanship just isn't there. So apparently they did end up selling the house. And I did want to talk about this like two or three months ago when this was like the hot topic, but I really wanted to see how they fared out towards the end and see if there was any other terrible design choices that they may make. Overall, you can see that the, the place looks nice. It lo obviously looks presentable now. It looks mid-century, but you've also got to remember is that they've had this place staged. So they've told the property stylist, hey, this place is mid-century. Can we have this more mid-century flair? Because it's obviously quite popular at the moment. So then they've obviously come through and added in the pieces to make it look a little bit more mid-century. With the things that they've actually done updating wise to the place, they really haven't stuck to that mid-century theme at all. Like, okay, yes, you used a couple of lighting pieces that are classified as mid-century, that is a more modern version of it. But everything else, not really, not really. It's literally just all the furnishing that actually makes it look more mid-century than what it actually is. So before, before we go ahead and discuss what I dislike and what I would have personally done and changed. I'm going to quickly talk about the things that I think that they did good. 
first. I think they did a pretty good job with the bathroom. Obviously, they didn't take out very many things. They kept a lot of the uh, original tiles and they just painted over it and updated the toilets and that sort of thing. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And I liked the fact that they kept the pink flooring. I know that that was probably more of a financial reason than anything else, but I think it adds a little bit of character and keeps that 70s sort of thing going. So I like that. The second thing I like is the fact that they didn't touch the kitchen that much. They kept the same island layout. They kept all the cabinetry as well, it looks like. So really they have actually, hold on. Where is, oh my God, are you serious? They didn't even add an exhaust fan. What do you mean they didn't add an exhaust fan? What have they done? No. Why didn't they add an exhaust fan? It's literally, oh. I was trying to give them so many like potential, hey, this isn't the worst thing in the world. And then they don't add an exhaust fan in the fucking kitchen. We're still talking about that damn fireplace and that damn fireplace did not need to be touched. So let me show you what I would have done if I was them and I wanted to kind of tie the space together, still give it that mid-century flair, but also not completely destroy the fireplace. All right, so this is the before of just the fireplace and what they ended up doing with it. Now, this is the after of what I would do. Now, I've kept the lighting the same. All I've done is I've done a acid wash on the stone because the stone would have lightened up at least a little bit if they had just done an acid wash. I've added a very similar flooring to what they wanted, which was just like a light timber oak flooring. But then I made the background black or the, the, blah, 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 the wall black. Now, why did I do this? Well, they were saying that it looked too dirty. And the reason why it was up against a white background. So of course it's going to look more brown, more dirty, especially up against something that's white. And flippers have this terrible, terrible habit of just painting everything as white as you can possibly get it. So having something that is some slightly off of that white is of course going to look dirtier, no matter what it is. Like having that background black, it allows for it to stand out and allows for those stone pieces to stand out, but not look as dirty. Now, personally, I wouldn't do it like a straight black. I would do a slightly off charcoal black that's a little bit more on the browner side just to pull out some of the more warmer tones out of that piece. So, so far so good. All right, I'm gonna show you a different uh, angle. So this is what the space looked like in their real estate photos. This is what I decided to do with it with that black accent wall. I changed out the beam for something that actually looks like a timber beam. Very easy thing to do. All they needed was a few extra people's help to actually get that lifted up and maybe an extra grand or something like that. It really would not have been that expensive and I honestly think it would have been way worth it than that shit stain on the fucking ceiling. We've left the fireplace as is, again, acid wash and then black wall. See what I mean by it allows for it to stand out more than previously. With their German schmear technique, they've always tried to hide the fact that fireplace is there. At that point, you might as well made it into an igloo. That's one option, but I can hear you. I can hear you saying, Tash, I don't like that. Okay, so that's with a lighter beam on the ceiling since it will go with the flooring. And I can hear someone else saying, but Tash, I don't like black. Okay, that's fine. Here it is. Here's what it looks like with a white wall. If you had just done a slight acid wash to it and then staged the place as is, this is probably how it would have looked. Personally, I really like that. And you've also got to remember is that the staging is what sells the place and they didn't even do that. They even mentioned in their like breakdown video, they were like, yeah, we spent this much on staging. That means someone else staged the place. That means someone else brought in those more mid-century sort of pieces and made it look more mid-century than it actually is. Even if you took out everything in terms of furniture in the space, it would look mid-century as a fireplace. It wouldn't have that cake frosting all over it, that's for certain. And it would have at least stood out and it would have still been a feature piece. I still hold hope that house flippers could do good in the world, but as of currently, I feel like they haven't. And it's really unfortunate because I do think that it could be a really, really great career path in the sense of someone that, you know, has the ability to actually do it and isn't just completely DIYing it the entire way through, could actually rebuild these beautiful old homes instead of 
us all knocking everything down. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, and I will see you on our next internet adventure.